Welcome back for another Minecraft video. This is Season 1, Episode 12, Part 3 of the Iron Farm series, where we go over the mechanics and I explain uh, how the Iron Farm works on Bedrock Edition around 2047 of the video if you wanted to skip ahead. If you do like the video, please hit that like button and subscribe for more content like this, and I hope you enjoy. And as you can see behind me here, I have uh, I've got a whole bunch of beds laid out. We're going to be tearing that all down. Uh, honestly, all we're waiting on is one villager to turn into an adult, and ooh, we might have actually, during that time of me setting up, have probably actually got him to turn into an adult. Uh, so far, we have this one. They're all set and ready to go. Uh, we did have a couple uh, nitwits that we had to get rid of and uh, make sure that they are uh, capable workers. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, I don't see any baby, and he's not a nitwit. This one right here, I have done three or four times, and <laughs> I had to redo the, the villager uh, because he continued to become a, a nitwit. So uh, we're going to open this up, let the cat out. Uh, come on, open. Okay, get out of there. We don't want you in there. All right, uh, so now, uh, as you see in the middle, uh, I uh, kind of scoped out here the, the middle area. Um, went up three blocks high. That, that'll be high enough because we're going to get rid of all those blocks. Sorry. Uh, so th this is where we're going to actually be putting the beds. And since we actually have all the adults ready to go, uh, this will take a little bit of time uh, to get everybody all set up. Uh, but for the most part, I mean, this this took me quite a while to get this uh, all set up. We only have three villagers in this one right here. So I have to get the other two villagers into that area. So that might be a challenge. Let's hope that uh, we don't struggle with that. But I figure I'll, I'll finish it up on stream as well as uh, get it on my video for uh, YouTube. So what we're going to do is open this up. And we don't really need this bed there anymore. Make sure that they cannot jump out. And see if we can actually nudge them into this area here. It might be a challenge. Uh, we do not need... Okay, here we go. First villager. Come on, go in there. It's fine. Let's see if we can actually get these in here. We're going to get rid of that. We don't need him to be like that anymore. And honestly, I might be able to use a water bucket if we have to. But let's try to nudge them out here into this area. Come on. We can just get one of them out there. Come on, nudge. Come on. Come on. I just want you to go right into that area. Come on. Perfect. Okay, I do not want to fall in there. I actually fell in there, uh, fell in one earlier. Uh, but, you know, a tip. If you do fall in there, make sure you have some scaffolding because that actually saved me from... <laughs> Having to basically redo a whole bunch of, uh, come on, get in there, a whole bunch of villagers because they would have just got out and it would have been a pain to get them back in unless I use like mine carts or something. All right, nudge them in there. Okay, so now that we got them in their spot, uh, the challenging part is to link them all to uh, their jobs, but we don't want to do the jobs first. Uh, what we actually need to do, and hopefully we have enough space in here, is get the bed set up first. Grab these. And all this stuff, I, I kind of left it here just so you guys can see that I made little pathways uh, on each side to kind of get them to where I needed them to go. Um, just to kind of show you how that all worked. The fletching tables are probably the best bet for this kind of uh, thing. I don't think it really matters what station it is. Um, it's probably easier to use one of, of something. But for me, I, I, I honestly think that maybe he used it because it's cheap. Uh, plus, he got a, a bunch of flint um, and wood. I mean, it's not really the most expensive. If you use, like, a smithing table or something like that, it could be really expensive. Um, composters, those are a little challenging, I think, just because... Um, they're not a, I don't think they're a full solid block. I don't know if that's the issue or not. Um, but anyway, I did uh, 
make a whole bunch of uh, stuff here so we have them all kind of ready. We are going to need buckets, uh, water. I am thinking of doing some lava maybe uh, in this middle area. Um, I do have some fence posts right here to block the water from going down in there. But I was thinking about maybe doing a lava pool in here as well. Just so while, they, while they're being pushed in there, they kind of do a little bit more damage. I'm um, hoping that's not going to cause any problems. If it does, I'll just remove it. They'll fall down there, get you know, get in that area, and uh, hopefully we won't have any problems. But we'll we'll figure it out when we get there. All right, so that's all the beds. Uh, so at this point, we can actually get rid of all the blocks that are under here. And then up here, I do have a uh, water source here. So uh, if you put two water buckets, kind of uh, key corner to each other, and then uh, remove that. I, I always do four. I know you could do three, uh, just one on each side. Uh, but in this way, I kind of, uh, I, f I feel like I eliminate the chance of uh, losing that water source and having to redo it. Plus, you don't have to actually go in the middle. So like if there's three across, you have to get the middle one. Uh, this one you can kind of get any corner and not really have to worry about it. All right, so I'm going to go down and sleep. All right, so the tricky part. This might take a while. Uh, you might have to redo them a couple times. What you want to try to do is do one at a time. Pick uh, either either corner. It doesn't matter. Um, I would start with the top um, piece first. So that way it kind of you know, you're, you're taking this piece off. Uh, put like a temporary block and then put one of these. Um, let's hope that he actually... Alright, during this part, uh, each villager needs to have a workstation. I will be explaining the mechanics of this later on in the video. Um, but for now, uh, what you want to do is make sure that you're linking up uh, each villager uh, to its own uh, workstation. If you have gotten to this part, uh, what you can do is place your workstation down, figure out what villager it links up to, and then place it near that villager, and that will work. Once you have all of your villagers linked up to their proper workstations, you're going to want to put a water source block underneath their feet to keep them at a float so they'll constantly be working. Look at that glass block here. Okay, I got it. I don't know why I keep getting hurt. Close that. I put the water source block in there. Alright, and you definitely want to remove, if you did uh, exactly what I did with the farm up above you here, you definitely want to remove all of that because they will spawn above you there. Alright, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go down and uh, set up the collection spot. I made a little hole here for our purposes for right now, and then this uh, goes down. Oh, jeez. Where the heck did all you guys come from? I'm pretty sure I lit this all up, so... Well, that was cool. Must not have lit this up well enough. Okay, so let's get some torches. Uh, which did I put? No, they're right there. That's weird. <laughs> uh. Oh well. Alright, so this is kind of the collection spot. Uh, I have it linked up to our little base over here uh, so we have easy access from our, our place and we'll have a hallway coming over here and, and we'll, we'll make a, a decent spot once we get this all established. But for now we're just going to get it all set up and ready to go. Um, that way we can start collecting iron hopefully. Alright so up here 
right underneath the magma blocks here, we got to have um, they're over here. Some minecart hoppers. We need. Um, let's get rid of some of this stuff. We'll need a chest to collect the items. We'll need at least four hoppers, four minecart rails. just to collect the, the items. Um, all right, so what I would do is start off, this is where the mine, the one uh, one block gap, this is where the hoppers need to be. So I'd put one block here. And where did my hoppers go? Did I, I thought I grabbed them. Apparently not. Okay. <laughs> so one going directly down, okay? And then one going to the side here, and put your minecart rails like that, and then so that way we can just break these. I mean, technically you don't need four because you're not going to leave them. So you got that there, that there, and then you just want to break. Make sure that you're breaking the right thing here. Oh course. It's alright. Just redo it. Okay. Put right there. Alright, and this is the tricky part. Just making sure that you're hitting. There we go. There it is. Bam. Okay. So now that you got both of those sitting there so they won't move, they won't go anywhere, now you can put the hoppers right there right there and then do the same thing here and if you don't have anything in your inventory it's it's just because it went into the the hopper so you'll be able to collect it once you're done put one right there one right there and then break those oh and there you go and then all you have to do is really kind of just block it off so they can't move anywhere um, if you know that you're not going to dig into this, I mean, honestly, I would probably just use uh, whatever block that you use to indicate that you don't want it to be moved um, and have it completely blocked off so it can't move, especially, I mean, in any any direction, really, because you want it to be completely enclosed so they don't fall off or get moved in any way, shape, or form. And then down here, I do not have any more hoppers, but you can have the the hopper line go all the way down if you want to but in, in our case here we're just going to put the the chest like that we'll still be able to open it got our rails right there and then that's all it is for the collection and then uh, down here I mean, we should be able to access it um, just looking up and grabbing it um, you can make it so you know there's more storage in there because eventually hopefully we'll have a lot of iron coming in so that's pretty much the collection spot underneath there. So let's go back up, kind of go around here. So I don't have to dig back up. All right. Let's fill this all up with water. So down here, there's a method in which you want to be able to do this here. And um, I believe, if I remember right, you need to put one block temporary and get the one uh, water source flowing kind of in that direction, okay? And then after that, you can just break it. Oh, crap. Dang it. Okay, we'll have to replace that on the other side. No worries. All right. And then once you got that going, uh, you can do each corner. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're just going to start one side and kind of go around. Unfortunately, I probably should have actually started. Let's let's start over here. Uh, maybe be a little bit easier here. So let's start there because that way our water source things on that side. And uh, break just the one. Get rid of this here. And then you're going to want. Um, on one side, 
you're going to want to start your water source block here on the kind of the edge and then on the other side you want it to start right here on the the water there so uh, we're going to start on this side and uh, d we'll, we'll do this side uh, like this okay Again, this will take a little bit of time. And then you want it to just kind of keep pushing out that way. Okay, gather up some more. And then just continue the process. And I'll come back to what I'm talking about for the difference. I'm going to have to go all the way down and get that. So then you continue coming over this way until you get kind of get close enough into this area and then you're going to want to do that temporary block just so you uh, know exactly where come on really I don't know why I wasn't doing that okay so you got the temporary block the water source and remember this side we're going all the way here so we need one two three four so we're going to have to go grab a couple more just to finish this side Unfortunately, I think what we're going to have to do is actually put those signs one higher. And that's fine. Here we got the signs. Let's, let's take care of that right now. Okay. I feel like that's going to put the gap in there, so that won't be an issue here. Break that. I think that might actually work a little bit better. Alright, so we got one side done. Now the other side is going to mirror this side, and then this side is going to mirror that side. But the way that we want this to be is on that, um, on the outside part. Okay. So go all the way across. Until we get close enough here. Once we get close enough, I think it's like three blocks away. One, two, three. But let's uh, just do two more here. And actually that might be, let's see here. Do that temporary block. And yep, no, that's perfect. Okay, so it is like four out. Uh, but this side... It's going to mirror the other side there. And as you see, everything's kind of being funneled into the center. But instead of doing this side, uh, we're going to actually go over there and do that side first. And yeah, might as well. It doesn't matter. It's just one bucket. Go all the way up there. All right, let's get rid of that. Okay. And so on that side, uh, we had it on here. Okay, we got all the corners done. And the last one right there. Alright. Now all we have left is this side. And on this side, uh, we're going to go into that corner piece a little bit. And we'll do that one last. Oh, no, we got to do in one more. There we go. I mean, we definitely can spawn cats up here, so it kind of makes me think. Oh, come on. It makes me think that it should work. I'm not really seeing anything so far, unfortunately. I think 
that I can waterlog this, yep. Well, hmm. Alright, after scratching my head quite a bit and doing a lot of research, I came up with the answer. And I'm gonna about to uh, actually splice the video at this point, because I stopped, took a minute, did some research, figured out what the mechanics were, the problems that I was having, and this is what I came up with. Uh, I have got the iron farm completed, it is now operational and working. Uh, I learned a few things uh, during the, the process of creating this, uh, a couple of very important things. Uh, so we're going to go over that uh, to make sure that uh, you're getting the, the right amount of iron golems and a very productive iron farm. Uh, so let's take a look. Uh, I'm going to put myself uh, over there and, and kind of go over uh, how I did it here. All right, so a few things. I did have to adjust this because um, earlier I put the five villagers in there. Some of them were sinking to different workstations. It was very frustrating. Uh, it took me a long time to get them all into their own workstation area. So my, my recommendation first off is if you're going to do it the way that I did it with a villager breeder, uh, the way that I did it uh, up here with the farm and whatnot, if you're going to do it that way, uh, do five at a time and make sure that they are synced up to the uh, job sites before you go on to the next five uh, villagers. Uh, it will take a lot longer, um, or what you can do is basically have them all in mine carts, which, you know, once you get this up and running, the iron's not going to be that big an issue, and we'll go down and show you how much iron I've gotten in such a, a small amount of time, honestly. But if you're going to do it my way, uh, the way that I did it, which, you know, it, it turned out okay. I mean, I got there. Um, but you need to make sure that you're placing your beds in the right way as well. And that's something I had to, to realize um, as I uh, started going through this. Um, at first, you have these two beds right here and you're facing north. And you want to make sure that you're placing one, two, kind of in the middle. And then kind of branching out from there. And then going all the way across one at a time. And doing that as you're creating the villagers. Uh, so like if you start on this side and I would recommend doing it from the north side. Get these villagers over here squared away first. Give them the beds first. Make sure, oh there's another one. Make sure that you are putting the beds down first. And then once they're synced up to their beds then put their workstations in place. It was it was a struggle, I'll be honest with you, to get this figured out, but I did figure out the mechanics of how to get this all operational and working. These beds have to be in the central area, and the first bed indicates where the center point of the village is, and that's the reason why this is so important, is to make sure that these beds are put in the center area. So, you know, if you put a bed over here, the iron golems might spawn outside of this central area and then to make sure that those villagers are surrounding those bed areas um, so that's the reason why that's so important um, and then once you get this side done then you can kind of go and I would I would recommend again starting in the middle branching yourself out and then uh, getting the beds all put where, where they need to once you get kind of the, the center area here these ones don't matter as much as long as you're doing this side first and then that side next that way, there's no confusion in the mechanics of where the center of the village is, because this is the center of the village, based off of the, the computer programming. And then the villagers are in a sp specific spot to make sure that the iron golems are spawning in this area. Um, part of it, I actually, later on, I actually kind of made a glass bridge across here, and then they were all kind of running... Uh, throughout here and it started working at that point it just wasn't as productive so I mean you could have them all in kind of a enclosed area where they can just run around and go from job site to job site but they got kind of frustrated with each other because they would get in each other's way and they couldn't really move unless you kind of have like a two space gap for them to walk through 
but I mean, you you could. Uh, it did work, as long as the the villagers are able to get to and from their workstation, it's not that big a deal. Uh, but once they are synced up to their jobs, then you're you're not gonna have any problems. Uh, then you're gonna start seeing all the iron golems coming in, and, and I mean, there's at least two at a time coming in constantly. And the fact that this is in the middle of our base, even when I was all the way over in the, the fishing area, um, it, this thing was still running. Okay? And so let me get out of here. Um, show you. Come on. There we go. And honestly, I can just mine all this stuff out, and it's just going to go straight into... Uh, the water, which is going to go down into the chest that I have down below. Uh, these ones I might lose. I'm not sure. Actually, let's see here. I don't really want to lose these ones because they're kind of nice to have. Oh, crouch. And as you can hear, I mean, they, they are constantly going. Uh, so after you get this up and running, um, you're going to have tons of iron. And I'm going to go down and show you. Oh, dang it. Missed some. Oh, well. Not the end of the world. Oh, well. Not going to worry about those. I'm going to tear this all down and uh, get this all looking really nice. But that's the gist of, of the iron farm, um, is making sure that they're in a certain um, area around the, the beds. There's if you watched the videos before, that's all correct. If you want to do it the way I had it before, before I modified this, and have all of them in the one spot, which I, I would actually recommend because they're not able to move and they're constantly able to work. Um, but again, I would just get all five of them into a location, make sure the beds are placed, and then, um, and then make sure that they're syncing up uh, to their job sites before you introduce more villagers to the area. So you don't have, you know, three of them need to go over to this side and a couple over here need to go to that side. You're not going to have any uh, any iron golems because they have to work, or at least 75% of them have to have jobs and they have to have worked in the day um, and during the daytime. And then you'll have the production. Um, and then if you have more because uh, I believe if you, you only have to have 10. Uh, I did a lot of research, believe me. It took me a, a long time to get this all figured out. But I did a lot of research. If you have 10 villagers in this area, you will get one iron golem going at a time. If you have 20, then you get two. And then it, so on and so forth. I mean, you could have up to however many um, is the limit for your uh, system. I mean, if you have a really good system... Uh, for bedrock, uh, that's which one I'm on. Uh, I think that there's a cap, and I can't remember exactly what the cap is. Uh, but you want to make sure that you're not really exceeding that cap too much, because then you can't have like a villager, uh, like a trading outpost. Um, I have heard that a lot of people will actually create kind of that, like a, a basically like a a build kind of around here where they're all you know enclosed in one single spot with their job site and then they're able to actually trade with them uh, if you wanted to utilize that and actually make this a training outpost you could do that I kind of wanted this out of sight out of mind not really worried about it in the middle of my base and so that's the reason why I did that this way and then I'm gonna have my trading outpost at the other village so it kind of gives me a reason to branch out and you know go over somewhere else and kind of do uh, a little traveling and stuff like that it kind of makes the game more fun for me uh, but if you wanted all central area you could actually make this a trading outpost and just kind of have individual cages kind of lined along this whole exterior you know uh, three blocks in you know one two three kind of going uh, diagonal there as long as they're in that middle area and not too close to the beds, um, then you're not going to have any problems. And you can have up to, I mean, you could 40, 50, and have a, a ton more iron golems. It would take a lot longer. And you want to make sure that your jobs, uh, your people are still employed and have jobs and they're able to access their workstation. Because if you don't, uh, if it 
drops below 75% of the villagers in the village, then you're not going to have any iron golems at all. It has to be 75% or higher. Uh, have to have jobs. They cannot be nitwits, um, which is the, the green typical uh, outfit. Uh, but as you see, I mean, this is working really good. There's been iron golems kind of flying in there constantly. And so let's go down and see how much iron I'm, I did uh, start rebuilding and kind of working on this while uh, I was letting it go for a while just to kind of keep myself busy while I was waiting to see how long. Oh, crap. I don't have my bow. I don't want. Jeez. Okay. So let's go sleep, and then I'm going to go down underneath because I already closed that all off. And then we're going to, um, eventually we're going to actually build this all out. And this is this is not going to be my my door uh, in the future. This is just going to be kind of a little outpost area for my fishing. Uh, that's what this is going to turn into. This isn't going to be my, my bedroom uh, long term. Okay, so down here, kind of made like a little tunnel. Uh, going to uh, where the chest is underneath. And this kind of indicates. So up here, as you can see, I, I've got tons of iron already coming in constantly. So I'm never going to have to worry about iron. I'm going to be able to get all the hoppers that I need for my sorter. I mean, there's so many things. Buckets for lava um, to make, you know, smelt things a lot easier uh, using less fuel. Or even using it for the the wood to make charcoal or whatever you want to do. Um, I, I guess I got a skeleton in there. I don't know how that came in there. But what I'm going to eventually do is make a room under here that sorts out those items. So they kind of go in an individual chest. And I'll probably build this down uh, to where that skeleton farm is. Um, kind of a little bit over this way. I think it's kind of down that direction. Um, so I'm going to actually build this down and have it go down a little bit further and then start my main sorting room. And then what I might do, and I, I, I'm not sure exactly how this is going to look, and maybe I'll wait until I have uh, shulkers uh, to have shulker boxes just because it looks nicer than chests. Uh, but what I might do is uh, put a uh, a chest up here to to put stuff in and then have that just go down into the main area I mean I could actually put a chest right here that wouldn't that wouldn't even bother any of this it just doesn't look any you know it, it, I don't know if they had different color chests I just feel like it would make it look not as good I mean it would still open and everything I'm not sure uh, I mean you could always let me know what you you think in the comments if uh, if that would be something that would look all right because I mean let's see here do we have any chests because I can kind of put one up there and kind of look at it real quick okay so if I mean I only have to have one really um, I just have to make it so it's uh, so I can open it all right and I definitely don't want the cats coming out. Unfortunately, I, I, I'm not for killing cats or anything. But if there's a whole bunch of cats running around here, they're, they're not going to spawn the iron golems either. Because the iron golems and the cats are actually on the same like spawn cap uh, that's available. And I, I can't remember exactly how many you can actually have a uh, maximum before they just despawn naturally and just kind of disappear. But I think it's like... 20 or 40 or something like that I can't remember exactly so I, I apologize for not having that information but I could have a double chest right here I mean I don't know it doesn't really look that bad and then have a hopper system kind of going down um, into that main uh, system right there and then all I have to do is basically put my my items in here I was also thinking of just having a chest room that basically has an area kind of like I had before where there's a hop or a hopper kind of exposed so I could put shulker sh uh, shulker boxes on top of it so unload it without um, 
without me having to unload the shulker, put it back in there, and kind of go through my whole sorting system. Um, so it's kind of on my mind of what I'm going to do with that. Um, but as you can see, I mean, the, these iron golems are coming in left and right um, constantly. So that's that's a really good sign. Um, also, I started working on this. this is uh, probably going to be uh, one corner for each corner and kind of branch out. And it's just going to be a really big tower uh, going um, up into, you know, probably way above here. Um, as long as I don't have anything that, you know, can spawn the iron golems and kind of mess with the mechanics, I think that that'll work and it'll look nice. Uh, but we'll we'll see as, as time goes along. Um, we'll get this all built out and looking really nice. I was thinking either have one of the corners uh, have, like, basically the entrance and exit of my base, or at least, like, the sorting uh, or, like, the inventory area or I might leave these you know just looking nice and maybe you know put in some decorations or something like that to make this look really nice I mean it's pretty complex it's kind of a system that you got you have to do in a specific order specific way uh, there is a little wiggle room though I mean as long as those villagers are in this area and there's no um, it, it can't be a solid block I mean as you see right here I have a carpet on top of those so the iron golems will not spawn on top of the workstations so as long as the floor and the ceiling and everything else is either covered by a transparent block which uh, carpet is a transparent block uh, basically anything that a chest can open into like uh, like I showed you down below with the glass all of that will work and those villagers as long as they're in this area kind of surrounding the beds and they're not I mean you don't want them to actually access the beds in, in the way that this is set up uh, just because one you want them to continue working constantly um, so my, my two suggestions is either trying to get them all into one spot like I originally planned because right now they're kind of in a kind of in like a four like a, a two by two area so they're able to kind of walk around but still access their uh, job sites um, but again I mean you can at this point I probably could use a line of, si of uh, pistons and kind of push them in there and kind of get it all figured out that way I mean I might do that uh, but for now it's working so I'm not really too worried about it it's not like it's something I'm going to be really looking at very much up here I mean I'm going to tear all this down uh, and I'm not even going to be up here. It's all just going to look, you know, it's going to just look nice. Uh, and then have the, the iron golems just constantly coming down in here into my uh, storage room. Uh, so that's it. Uh, that's just going to be the, the end of this video. I'm gonna Well, that's my video for today. And thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to put it in the comments down below. And I'll make sure to answer those questions for you and get another video out if I need to. Thank you so much.